Hi, welcome back. Are you ready to do some physics? Great, let's do it. Remember last time we were talking about rotational kinematics and we saw that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the linear variables and rotational variables. For example, the linear displacement s went to rotational displacement theta, the linear velocity v went to rotational velocity omega, the linear acceleration a went to rotational acceleration alpha, the, lin the force in the linear case went to torque in the rotational case. The mass in the linear case went to moment of inertia, I, in the rotational case, etc. All right, so now it's time to do a concept test. Get your mobile phones ready. Based on the analogies just discussed, which one of the following must be the definition of angular momentum given that the linear momentum P is mass times the velocity? Choice A is L is equal to I times omega squared. Choice B is L is equal to M times omega. C is L is equal to I V. The fourth one is L is equal to I omega. And the last one is none of the above. And we'll be back after the commercials. Hi, welcome back. Now for the answers to the concept test. If you got D, you are correct. Because the angular momentum is I times omega. Remember, the, the rotational analog of mass is moment of inertia and the rotational analog of the linear velocity v is the rotational velocity omega. Angular momentum can also be defined in another way as r cross p. And you can see this is another vector. Here r is the displacement vector of the particle and p is the momentum vector. In component form, the z component of angular momentum, l sub z, will be x piece of y minus y times piece of x. Here, piece of y and piece of x are the y and x components of the linear momentum. And now let's do another concept test. Get your mobile phones ready. All right, under what condition is the angular momentum conserved? A, when there are no net external forces on the system. B, when there are no net external torques on the system. C, when there's no work done by non-conservative forces. D, all of the above. And E, none of the above. Key in your answers using your mobile phone, and we'll see, see you back after the commercials. Welcome back. And now for the answer to the concept test. If you chose B, you're correct. Because when there are no net external torques acting on the system, the angular momentum is conserved. This is an analogy with the conservation of linear momentum, where when there is no net external forces acting on the system, linear momentum is conserved. Notice that A is not correct because there may not be any net external force on the system but the net external torque may still be non-zero because if two forces are equal and opposite and they are not passing through the same point, the net force on the system is zero but the net torque may not be zero. So this is something that you should keep in mind. And angular momentum is conserved only when there are no net external torques acting on the system. A really neat example of angular momentum conservation is what happens to a spinning skater when she puts her arms close to herself. What do you think happens? Right, she starts to spin faster. Why does this happen? It's because the force that she's exerting on her, uh, on her arms to put them close to her body, these are internal forces and they don't produce any external torque on her. And because of this, angular momentum is conserved. And that's why when the moment of inertia decreases, when she puts her arms close to herself, her angular speed must increase to make sure that the angular momentum stays constant. But that is theoretical. Physics is real. So let me illustrate for you how it really works in real life. So here, I'm going to sit on this stool and give myself a push and watch what happens when I put my... Ooh, I'm almost falling. Look what happens when I put my arms close to myself. I'm getting dizzy there. Okay, so you can see that every time I put my arms close to myself, I actually start to spin faster. Here is another real demonstration. I have a bicycle wheel in my hand, and I'll give it a spin so that it starts spinning in the counterclockwise direction, and then I'll suddenly flip it upside down. The question that I have for you is what do you think is going to happen as a result of that? And I want you to think about angular momentum conservation. That will be a good hint. Think about it. So now I'm ready to flip it. Watch what happens. It's 
So every time I flip it, somehow I start to move in the opposite direction. Why do you think it's the case? And when I flip it back, all right, so the question is, why did I begin to rotate when I was initially at rest? It turns out that initially the wheel was spinning in the counterclockwise direction and I was at rest. But when I gave a torque to the wheel and turned it upside down so that its angular momentum changed from counterclockwise to clockwise direction, since the angular momentum of the system of me and the wheel taken together is conserved, when I gave it a torque, it gave me a torque and these are internal torques acting on the system. So there's no external torque on the whole system and the angular momentum is conserved. So when the wheel started spinning clockwise, I must start spinning in the counterclockwise direction to conserve the angular momentum of the whole system. Okay, get ready for another concept test. Get your mobile phones out. All right, so two people, each with mass m is equal to 80 kg, pass each other on the sidewalk. They are each walking in a straight path with a speed of 2 meters per second in opposite directions, separated by a distance of 2 meters. What is the combined angular momentum L of both pedestrians? The choices are L is equal to MVD, L is equal to minus MVD, L is equal to 2 MVD, L is equal to minus 2 MVD, and L equal to 0. All right, I also wanted to remind you that counterclockwise motion has positive angular momentum. All right, punch in your answers, and I'll see you right after the break. Welcome back. And now for the correct answer to the concept test. If you chose A, you're correct. So the correct answer is angular momentum in this case is m v times d. And don't let me catch you thinking that if an object is not rotating, it doesn't have an angular momentum because that's not correct. And here's why. If you think of the definition of angular momentum as r cross p, and you think of your origin as one of the persons, then that person does not have any angular momentum about the point, but the other person does. And that will be the momentum of that person, m times v, times the perpendicular distance d. And in this case, it happens to be in the counterclockwise direction, and that's why we chose the sign to be positive. And now for the answer to last week's puzzler. What is the angular momentum of vehicular traffic in India? Many of you wrote in that it's zero. Unfortunately, that is not correct. And here's why. In India, people drive on the left side of the road, at least most of the time, and so we can use the same logic that we has, had used for two pedestrians. And in this case, the angular momentum of one car, for example, will be mass times its velocity times the distance from the median. And so if there are n cars, you can multiply it by n, and you can find the total angular momentum. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And remember, it's your universe. Know the rules. Goodbye. See you next time.